Hi everybody, Paul here, and I'm here with Francine and Quilbert, one of our favorite animal ambassadors. And we're here to answer all your Quilbert-related questions and do a Quilbert check-in for the winter. Uh, first, we want to give you a little bit of a, run of a rundown of who exactly Quilbert is for any viewers that might have missed the many, many Quilbert chats that we've done throughout this year. Uh, so Quilbert is a prehensile-tailed porcupine, and he's part of our ambassador program because when he was first born, um, his mom was a first-time mom, and she really didn't know what to do, so she just kind of had him and walked away. So we had to hand-raise him, um, so he's very used to his keepers. He loves hanging out with everybody, um, but he also makes a really great ambassador for his species because you can kind of get up close to this, um, this animal that a lot of people don't know much about. Uh, so prehensile-tailed porcupines are found in South America, so Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Bolivia, and a few other countries down there. And uh, as their name might suggest, they have this really long tail because this type of porcupine lives up in the trees. So that tail helps them grab onto branches and navigate their way around up in the canopy so they don't fall down. They've got those really great claws that are made for gripping. Um, but in addition, they also have that tail that doesn't have any quills on it uh, because quills can be a little bit slippery. Um, so it's just a bare tail and it grabs onto those branches and lets them dangle from it if he needs to, but usually they just use it as an extra support. Um, so Quilbert is now two and a half years old. Um, it seems like just yesterday he was a tiny little baby, um, but they grow up pretty quick, but he is fully grown. So he's only, he's about nine and a half pounds, and a lot of times people see him and they think he's a baby because he is kind of small, uh, but when you're climbing around up in the trees, you don't want to weigh that much. Um, you know, it, you don't want to accidentally break a branch just because you're, you're a little bit hefty. So, um, so he's pretty much fully grown. He's about the same size as his dad, um, Eddie, um, but he's a little bit smaller than his mom, Lucia. Um, his mom, I think, is just over 10 pounds. So we can put him down on the table and let him explore. We brought some snow in. It's um, scattered with some fun treats. Um, out in the wild, he would mainly eat leaves and shoots and fruits and things like that. Um, here we give him a variety of different vegetables, a lot of leafy greens. Um, but today he's getting some treats as well, so he's getting some dried cranberries in the snow. Um, again, where these guys come from, it's pretty warm, so he wouldn't normally see snow, so this is kind of a special fun treat. So, yeah, we'll open up to questions. Uh, Francine and I will answer whatever uh, you would like to know about Quilbert. Does he like avocado as much as Peterson does? Francine? Does he? He does, we, avocado's more of a treat. Yeah, so he hasn't gotten it very often, so I wouldn't say that it's one of his favorites like Peterson loves it. What else does he eat? He gets a variety of vegetables mostly and biscuits. So he does really like the sweet potato, carrot, of course that peanut that he's crunching on right now, <laughs> but that's just a special treat. He loves his lettuce, his biscuits, I'll tell you what he doesn't like. <laughs> he hates cucumber. Aww. He just will not touch it. And green pepper is pretty far down on the list. So he'll only eat that if he has no other options. Is his nose soft? It is. It's very, it's very soft and it's very large because these guys rely on their sense of smell. So a really big nose lets you get a lot of uh, scent in there. Why are certain animals animal ambassadors? So certain animals, um, sometimes it's because they don't um, have as much exposure as some of the very common animals, and we want you guys to know about all the animals that are out there in the world. Um, we do choose our animal ambassadors very carefully. We want to make sure that it's um, a good experience for the ambassadors, too. Um, everything we do is positive reinforcement. Um, if Quilbert didn't want to come out today, he didn't have to. Um, but again, he's hand-reared, so he, he likes coming out, he likes spending time with us. And when he does come out, it's always a positive experience. He gets to eat treats, he gets to explore, he gets to do some training, because they love doing training. Um, so it's, it's very, we're very particular about who is an animal ambassador. Um, but they're, they're great um, to use to educate you guys about you know, species that you wouldn't really know about otherwise. Does he shed his quills? He does. Um, so quills are just modified hair. Um, so just like your hair, they'll fall out from time to time. Um, you have to watch out when you're cleaning in his, his enclosure, Francine knows for sure, because um, they can stick you. And um, with the New World Porcupines, which he is, um, those quills are actually serrated. So if they stick in you, 
they stick in there really, really good, and it's kind of hard to pull them out. What's the difference between New World and Old World animals? So New World animals come from the Americas, so North and South America, and then Old World animals come from over um, Africa, Asia, and over there. How fast does he run? Oh, um, I've never timed him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. He does like to run around, uh, and he does run in the wheel that you guys have probably seen on some of the other Facebook Lives. But, yeah, we haven't clocked it. <laughs> <laughs> does he like any tactile reinforcements? Um, he's not too big on it. Um, we do ask him to let us kind of you know, touch his feet, touch his belly, just so we can... Um, monitor his health a little bit better. Um, it's really good for any time we need to take him to the veterinarian so we can check him out. But I don't think he really cares one way or the other. Um, we give him different textures to play with. That's another type of tactile stuff, but things from his uh, tactile um, experiences from his keepers, he doesn't really care either way. <laughs> so are those whiskers on the side of his nose? Yes, those are whiskers. So that will help him navigate. They are nocturnal. So when they are looking for food at night, that helps them determine where they can go and feel around in their environment. Is there soft fur under the quills? There is an undercoat under there. Um, when he was first born, you could see it really well um, because it was red fur under there. Um, and so it does protect him against the elements, keeps him warm, and also helps protect him against any loose quills so he doesn't um, get stuck, but his quills have overgrown that and they overgrew his undercoat really quickly. So he went from being a, a cute little redhead to this cute <laughs> little guy you see right here um, rather quickly. So how much time would um, would Quilbert spend up, up in the trees? Um, basically most of his day, unless yeah. he's moving from one tree to another, um, he'll, he'll stay up in the tree all day. And they stay way up there, up some, anywhere from like six to 10 meters up in the trees, just really up high, um, constantly searching around for leaves and fruit and other fun stuff. Are his nails sharp? They can be sharp and we do trim them. So that is one of the things that we have trained him to do voluntary nail trims. So he gets some really good treats while we give him a mani-pedi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what other behaviors have you trained with him? Um, we don't do a ton of behaviors with Quilbert, but we'll ask him to step up onto our hand so we can transport him from place to place. Um, again, we ask him to let us do um, tactile um, behaviors so we can touch his belly, touch his feet, like Francine said. It's really good for when we need to trim his nails. Um, we do target behaviors where he touches his nose to a little target, and that's very useful for asking him to go from place to place. Uh, so Francine needed him to go to the other side of this little table right here. She could hold out a target. He would walk over, touch his nose to it, and get a treat. Um, right now, he's got so many fun treats on this side of the table, I don't think we'd be able to get him away from that. Uh, but normally, uh, that's how that would work. Um, I don't know. He's we... trained to go into his crate so we can take him places. That's right. Let's say about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, he still is very much a wild animal, so we wouldn't ask too much from him. Um, he's not, again, he's, he's not like an animal that you would have at home, like your dog or your cat. Um, so we don't want to make him uncomfortable by trying to make, make him do something that wouldn't be a natural behavior or a husbandry behavior. Uh -huh. uh, what's his life expectancy? Um, so these guys can usually live between 15 and 17 years. Um, it's not unheard of for um, there to be much, much older uh, prehensile tail porcupines in the zoo world, uh, but that's on average. What types of predators would he have in his native habitat? Um, Possibly birds of prey, yeah. um, maybe a larger mammal, but it's, Not, yeah. it's very rare because they can defend themselves so well. So the yes. predators typically don't go for a porcupine. They don't want to put up with that fight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because while uh, porcupines are not an aggressive species, they will defend themselves for sure. If he feels threatened, he will. they, they don't really back down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so since he's a rodent, um, besides all the quills to protect him, he does have these large teeth here that he can also uh, defend himself <laughs> with. <laughs> he's Sorry, the, the camera doesn't want to focus on him right now. We'll, we'll maybe see it later. 
Um, so speaking of his good defenses, mm -hmm. how is staff able to handle him without getting constantly <laughs> poked? Uh, we ask very nicely. Yes. <laughs> um, like, like I said, everything is positive reinforcement. So again, if he didn't want to come out today, he didn't have to. Uh, but since he wants to come out, he'll walk onto our hands and, you know, very carefully he'll walk onto our hands and we give him some treats um, that we can move him from one place to another. Um, if he didn't feel comfortable, he would kind of be poofed out right now, what we call quilled up. Um, so you'd see all those quills standing on end um, and then we wouldn't be able to handle it. <laughs> so it looks like he's got different sized quills uh, depending on where they are on his body. What would his longest quill be? Oh. Um, probably kind of more near the hind end right yeah. here. These are really long ones. Here. But yes, that's a really good observation. He has really small ones around his face, and then he even has these really tiny quills right on his ear. Oh, he's got, I love his ears. They're so short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you remind us how old he is? He is two and a half. And let's see. Where can people find the animal ambassadors here at Brookfield Zoo? So it depends on which ambassador you're talking about. Um, for Quilbert, um, his main home is behind the scenes, uh, but we take our animal ambassadors around the park uh, to all sorts of different locations, you know, when the weather is appropriate, of course, um, and we'll do chats with them throughout the day. So you just kind of have to chance upon them, huh? Yeah, yeah, we generally schedule them out, um, so hopefully there's some advance notice. Um, sometimes we like to surprise guests, though, so <laughs> you'll just find us wandering out there with Wilbert. <laughs> What's his favorite treat? I don't know. Um, peanuts are a big favorite, for sure. Yeah, I would say sure. peanuts are definitely one of the top. But um, just like anything like uh, that's a treat, he only gets those on occasion. Um, his main diet is what Francine described earlier, mainly vegetables and leafy greens and some biscuits. Mm -hmm. What's his eyesight like? It's not the best. Um, these guys are mainly a nocturnal species. Um, he has kind of adjusted to our, um, <laughs> our schedule. Um, since we do come and feed him during the day, he's excited to wake up and then he goes back to sleep. <laughs> um, but their sense of smell is really good. And those really big whiskers that we showed off earlier are great for finding your way around in the trees. Uh, when it's dark out, when you can't really see much, because you can actually feel your way around using your whiskers. And you can even see he has some hairs on the side of his body that he can also use to kind of detect Ooh. if there's something next to him or like a branch that he can move to. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> does he make any noises? He can. Um, he can make kind of some, some whining noises. Um, if he's really upset, he can make a, a, what we call like a chittering noise. Um, kind of clacking his teeth a little bit. Yeah, similar to other rodents. Paul, did you want to demonstrate his whining noise? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, can you remind us where they live in the, in the wild? Not so, here. yeah. So in the wild, uh, they live up in the rainforests out in uh, South America. Um, so the northern part of South America. So basically, um, the very northernmost part of Argentina up through... Um, into in Brazil as well, in Venezuela, uh, Guyana, and I think there's a couple other countries down there. Uh, is he usually more in cold weather or warm weather? Oh, they're exclusively a warm weather warm. species. So this is a, a okay. fun little activity. He didn't seem to yeah. care about the snow at all. He no, was just like he's, hanging out yeah, on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He's not easily impressed. <laughs> he's um, seen it all. So I would assume they sleep in trees since they spend most of their time in trees. Yes, they'll find do, a little nook. I was going to say, do they make a nest or do they just kind of curl up? Generally, they'll find a little nook in the branches and, and curl up and secure themselves in there when they go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I think I skipped a couple. Um, can you tell us what, what he's getting right now, aside from the sweet potato? Sweet potato, peanuts. carrot, corn, a few peanuts. These are um, leaf eater biscuits, so they're made for animals that do eat leaves mostly. And here's a biscuit that's made for rodents. And then there's an extra special treat, and here's some pear. Are they uh, endangered or 
They're not. Vulnerable? They're what okay. we call uh, least concern. Okay. Uh, but obviously they are vulnerable to things like illegal logging. Um, since they do live up in trees, anything that harms the rainforest also harms these guys in their habitat. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions? <laughs> Anybody else have any more questions before we wrap up? I'll give them, I'll give them a minute or sure. two. Sure. Yeah. No. Boulder's <laughs> just fun to watch. <laughs> He could probably eat all day, huh? Yeah. He's like, yes. He, he's he like, does he's get like full that. after a while. And that's <laughs> either when he'll go and take a nap or run around and get some of that energy out. <laughs> there are a lot of really good questions today. Yeah. So there are also um, some porcupines in North America, um, but they do not have the preamstyle tail. Um, and they're found mainly west of the Rockies and um, on the east coast from kind of New York on up. There's a few exceptions here and there. And then they're found throughout Canada as well. Um, oh, how many uh, prehensile tailed porcupines live here at Brookfield Zoo? Uh, three right now. Um, so Quilbert and then his mom and his dad. Do we have any um, North American porcupines here? No, we do not. <laughs> Does he ever <laughs> climb off the cart to go exploring? Um, Sometimes, if he's feeling very rambunctious. Um, but since he is getting a lot of fun treats up here, he's, he's more than content to stay where he's at. Uh, can they swim? Oh, that I'm not sure of. Francine, do you know? I am not sure. Yeah. Ooh, well, we'll look that up yeah. and get back to you guys. That was a really good question. Yeah, we had really good questions today. Okay, well... <laughs> Well, thank you guys for visiting with us again, uh, asking all those great questions about our animal ambassador, Quilbert. And thank you for supporting Brookfield Zoo, and please tune in next time. <laughs>